Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm late with some of my videos. Uh, I try to put up three, you know, I put three up on Monday and two yesterday up on Tuesday, hoping it would buy me some time because obviously I haven't been feeling well and uh, I have a lot going on. I got to go see the doctor again tomorrow and I will update you guys for those who don't know, who haven't found information on my uh, social media about what's going on with me. I will make a, you know, maybe a quick video of it or mention it in an upcoming Venom vlog at some point uh, coming up. But for right now, I want to get more answers from the doctor tomorrow before I, you know, divulge anything. And I want to see what my options are as far as procedures and, and treatment go. So just bear with me. I promise you guys though that I will, uh, I will you know, inform you on what's going on. Um, and, uh, and we'll get through it together. It'll be fine. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted today, though, when I woke up, I came home from work. I got to leave, like, a little bit early from work, which was nice because I was really feeling crappy. I have tomorrow off so I can go see the doctor. And on my way home, I picked up Venomized number one. As you guys knew, I would because I've been excited for this book uh, ever since it was announced. And it is the return of Colin Bunn and Ivan Coella working together on this. They did Venomverse together. And if you haven't watched my videos about the Edge of Venomverse review, Venomverse review, and Poison X, I just just put them up this past week so make sure you go check those out there you know within the past 10 episodes all three of those you can check out and watch and that'll catch you up to date on what's happening in Venomize and if you don't want any spoilers for Venomize I would recommend maybe not watching this episode just yet go pick up the book read it for yourself and come back here because I'm probably gonna do you know spoilers in this review uh, and also for those of you out there who want to read it uh, here's a digital code boom right there first person to put that digital code in at marvel.com slash redeem go to that website put that code in the first person put in gets a free copy of Venomized, a digital copy. So uh, yes, that's for you guys. That's a gift for you. Every week or every, yeah, every week, I guess, uh, a new issue of Venomized will come out and every week we'll give away a new digital code. And I also have the main Venom book, uh, Venom 164 and 165. Those come out this month and I have 164 now. I'll do a review of that one too. It's called The Nativity and we will definitely get into that uh, in a couple episodes from now. And I'll give away the digital code for that issue as well in that episode. Uh, but today we're going to talk about Venomized and this is kind of the culmination of what Colin Bunn has kind of set up with um, the other writers on Edge of Venomverse and then his run on Venomverse and then what he continued into Poison X, which is a, uh, you know, Venom went to an alternate reality. He met other Venoms from alternate realities, and uh, together they fought against this group called the Poisons. And the Poisons are this, you know, this life form, this alien life form that acts as a unifier. They see themselves as doing some kind of good. They think if they put a, a you know, a symbiote by itself, kind of useless to them. A human by itself, kind of useless to them. But if they put a symbiote on a human, especially a super-powered human, like an Avenger or an X-Man, uh, then when they consume them as a poison, they unite both of the minds together, the symbiote and the person, but then bury them deep and make them part of a hive mind. And that's what the poisons are. They all they think alike. They all have the same goal, the same mission. And there's, some of them are very self-sacrificing for the greater purpose of them. And uh, But they're very, very intense creatures. And uh, and they're very deceiving creatures because, you know, the way you get, you know, poisoned essentially is these little hatchlings walk around and they show you, they have low-level psychic abilities, and they show you a loved one, someone that maybe you lost or someone you care about. They'll make you think you're seeing them. And as soon as they touch you, all they need is one touch and you become a poison. And, uh, and so, yeah, they are very nefarious creatures and they have, you know, universal domination plans is what they want to do. They want to infect everything with a symbiote and then infect those symbiotes with what they do, their poison, you know, abilities, and then, uh, and, and ch you know, make everything a hive mind. And uh, that's what they're trying to do. And you actually see in this book a little hints of maybe something else going on, someone else behind the poisons, which is really interesting. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, but I want to talk about the opening of this book because it was freaking awesome. Uh, the opening of this book had the X-Men in it, which you know me, a huge X-Men fan. Um, and the book opens up and it has uh, Kitty Pride and uh, Colossus, Nightcrawler, Old Man Logan, all of them are in the X-Mansion and uh, the X-Force show up. And X-Force is led by Cable, there's a Wolverine on his team, there's a Phantom X on his team and they're showing up, I think Feral was there as well, and they're showing up but they're poisons. They're not actually the this universe's X-Force members, they're poisons from the other universe. And they show up and they have these big guns and weapons and they're just shooting the students left and right and they're just massacring everybody. And you're like, holy crap, this is really intense. Everyone's dying. The first kid, I think it's Eyeball Boy or something, he gets shot. He falls down. There's like red coming out of him. And you're like, oh my God, he's dead. Like there's blood everywhere. They killed this kid. Then you find out that the blood starts to move. And uh, you're like, whoa, what's going on? 
And then it cuts to inside the mansion where there's a student running down the hallway and she's like, you know, Miss Pride, Miss Pride, please run, run, run. They're coming, they're coming. And then this student gets shot in the back. And when she falls into Kitty Pride's arms, uh, she starts to, you know, a symbiote starts to form around her. And what you, what they realize is that no one's actually being killed. No one's actually even being hurt. But all the students and faculty members and X-Men members are being shot with these guns that are essentially shooting bullets that are symbiotes. Uh, and as we know from the Poison X storyline, the, the poisons went to Clintar, the home planet of the symbiotes, and they captured all the symbiotes all over the planet. Because when Corsair, Cyclops' father, went to return the three symbiotes that the X-Men were using, he went to return them back to their home world. When he got there, the home world was empty. So clearly the poisons made a first stop over on Clintar, captured all of their you know, symbiotes, and then started modifying them. They, they have like aggression modifiers. They have like um, attachment modifiers. Uh, they, they've manipulated them in all these ways uh, based off of what uh, we saw that guy do, uh, like the bounty hunter guy from uh, Poison X. He was like manipulating some of the symbiotes. He was working for the poison. So all that tech, all that gear there, if you read Poison X, you'll see it all here. And the poisons are using it. And they're like, yeah, everything we learned from that, you know, like that bounty hunter guy, we're applying now. And we're creating these symbiotes and we're modifying them and we're, you know, attaching them to all these heroes. And this planet has way more heroes and way more stuff going on than we've than any other world we've been to so far. So uh, this is going to be great. This is like a feeding frenzy. And we're, we basically just showed up to a buffet. And we're going to infect everything with a symbiote so that way we can acquire them and bring them into the hive mind of the poisons. So that's the kind of the big plan that Thanos and Doctor Doom are doing, uh, which are you know poison versions of both of them from the other reality. And they're coming in and they're wiping everyone out. They're using the X-Force. They're using other members. They're taking out all the heroes. And throughout the book, you're just seeing like Thor, Hercules. Uh, you're seeing Iron Man, Iron Fist, the Defenders, you know, Luke Cage, uh, Jessica Jones. Everyone's being infected by symbiotes. And you're like, holy crap what's happening like this it's really intense and really crazy and it's not till about halfway through the book that venom shows up with the five uh, the four x-men surviving four x-men that he went to space with because obviously we know gene gray became a poison so they were trying to come back in time to warn everybody but the poisons were already way ahead of them and already attacking earth so when they show up eddie brock has to team up with spider-man who once again has been infected he has a black symbiote and unlike everyone else he knew what to do with it he went to the church and tried to use the church bells to get rid of it but it wouldn't come off and then he realizes oh wait you're a victim you've been manipulated and you've been tweaked you know, like your dna and you know whatever you are the clintar uh symbiote you've been modified so now you won't even come off me like even with vibrations or sound you're stuck to me like they, they clearly wanted you to never leave me uh so what's this mean and you see spider-man trying to put it together like what's what does this mean why do they want us to have symbiotes uh and then eddie brock shows up and answers that because you know they are poisons and they need us to be infected with symbiotes so they can take us over so then once that happens, you know, once that comes clear, they unite and they get Captain America from this universe. He does not have a symbiote. Kitty Pride, she still hasn't been infected, but uh, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Old Man Logan, he, they have. Uh, so has Nova and a couple other people. Uh, the Thing uh, from the Fantastic Four, he has a symbiote on him too. So they're all sitting around, you know, fully in control of what they're doing so far. But um, Spider-Man notices, he's starting to notice some other things. He's walking around with these grenades that go off and, you know, infect you with a symbiote. He has a couple grenades that didn't go off. So he's bringing them around, you know, trying to study and learn answers from. So you see every all these minds are at work. Spider-Man is a main character in this. The X-Men are main characters. Captain America is here. Uh, so it has echoes of what happened in the Venomverse book. But just a lot of the characters in this one, half of them have symbiotes, half of them don't. And they're deferring to Venom for answers because Venom has experienced this before. So it makes Venom instantly like the main guy. He's the one who's like, look, I'm not a team player. I don't care about any of you. I don't know what's going on. Uh, or I kind of I kind of know what's going on, but uh, I, you know, I don't want to be here. And, uh, and if, if we literally have a fight on our hands, we may lose this because in the other world, we pretty much just got teleported back here and we gave up. Uh, you know, Doctor Strange got taken, Captain America, they all been turned into poisons over in that other world. So we may not stand a chance. Uh, so basically, it, this is it. This is our world. We got to fight. And I'm, I'll give you the information I have, but I don't know if it's enough. And then uh, meanwhile, uh, Doom and Thanos, you start to see that there's something more going on behind the poisons. Uh, they're in a room and Dr. Doom is like, you know, like uh, there is one like a error, I think it's in the storyline. It's like a, a lettering error because it starts off and Thanos says, uh, you know, or Dr. Doom says, hey, what about the anomaly? And, uh, and Thanos says, don't worry, we have it all under control. And then a couple panels later, Dr. Doom says, 
uh, well, it's like I said, we have it all under control. And it's like, well, Dr. Doom didn't say that the first time. Thanos did. Uh, but the only thing I can maybe explain that with is that they're a hive mind, so it doesn't matter which one of them are talking, they both kind of said it. Uh, so that was kind of my, may, maybe it's not a, a lettering error, but I thought it might have been. Uh, but either way, in that sequence, during that 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 part of the story, uh, Dr. Doom says, you know, I just don't want to let her down again. And he turns around and he sees the little hatchlings and they're showing an image of a woman. And it might either be his mom or, uh, you know, someone he cared about at one point in the comics. I think it might be his mom, though. Um, so it, it has Dr. Doom seeing his mom. And that's what this particular hatchling is showing him. And then when Thanos looks back at the hatchling, he sees death. Uh, because obviously, you know, he's in love with death. Uh, so it's clear that there is a her or a hive mind or, or, or a singular being that might be in control of the hatchlings or the poisons. Um, possibly that's behind it because they both talk about how they're replaceable. Like Thanos is like, I'm replaceable, you're replaceable. So if we fail again, she's going to get new generals. And uh, so they're both referring to her as a she, but they're seeing two different people, two different women. Uh, so that was really interesting to me. So I wonder what exactly is going on there. I'm sure we're going to learn more about that. And as far as the anomaly goes, uh, I saw in an interview, Colin Bunn said there's three anomalies. There are three things that the poisons are not familiar with and haven't dealt with before that, uh, that is a weakness to them. And we learned what one of those anomalies was in the uh, Venomverse comic book, which is Carnage. Uh, you know, Eddie Brock and Doctor Strange, they summoned a Carnage from a, another universe. And he, even though he died in the battle, he blew up with Deadpool. Because uh, the two of them became buddies and started killing a bunch of poisons together, uh, but they did blow. They blew up in the explosion and died. Uh, but a, an anomaly is Cletus Cassidy. He has a symbiote inside of him. It was born on Earth. It acts differently. Has different powers. It can make solid constructs that cut right through the poisons. So Thanos is like, look, I don't want to run into this problem again. I want you to find the anomaly before it becomes a problem. So you actually have them go hunting for Carnage, uh, and he's right where we left off at the end of the Carnage series in issue 16, where he's been recaptured. He has no legs, he has no symbiote, his symbiote's been taken off him, but he still has traces of it inside of him. So they find him chained up, and he's like locked in there, and uh, the poisons break him out, and try to infect him with a new symbiote that they modified. So at the end, you see Carnage freaking out and screaming, going, get it off me, get it off me. And the symbiote's trying to form around him. It's a black symbiote too, not a red one. And it's trying to form around him. But he's so used to the symbiote coming from within that an external symbiote is d damaging him. And Colin Bunn did say there was going to be three anomalies. He said one of them was going to be Carnage. So Carnage is a, a something that could kill the poisons easily. So that's why they're trying to take control of him now. But he may hopefully break loose and, uh, and bring the fight back to them. Uh, then there's also um, Kid Kaiju is a Marvel character that is apparently going to cause some problems for the poisons and how they, you know, um, uh, bond with people and, and creatures and other symbiotes. And then there's also going to be Anti-Venom, Agent Anti-Venom Flash Thompson. So his powers are something the poisons have never come across. So he's going to be, you know, um, something that'll be another anomaly against them. So when I saw that in the interview with Colin Bunn, I was like, cool. So there's, there's three like things that could kill the poisons. The MacGuffin's already set up. Uh, and so uh, one of them though is possibly already captured with Carnage and he's might be turned uh, to the dark side, even though he's already a bad person. It'll be interesting to see what they do with Carnage uh, in this story and even afterwards and see what maybe new form he takes. So yeah, I like this book a lot. I thought it was awesome. It was everything I was kind of hoping it would be. It's the Marvel Universe. You see all these characters. Cullen Bunn, I love his dialogue with like characters like Spider-Man, uh, even with Thor and Hercules. I really like their scene together. I liked him writing the, you know, the other X-Men, not the five kids. And then even when the kid showed up, they were pretty spot on in this one. And there was a lot of cool, the artwork, I mean, the artwork is amazing. That's what really brings this book home to me is the artwork, but it's written really well. I think Colin Bunn again is on top of his game. He was in Venomverse for me, and this just proves that him and Iban are a great team together. So uh, I really dig this, and he did. He made Eddie like competent. He like he Eddie's not in a ton of scenes in this, but I know he will be going forward. But Eddie actually was like you know competent and you know making decisions, kind of like he did in Venomverse, and I like that. I don't. I, I hate when they just you know play him down as like the dumb dumb guy or whatever. I'm like, no, this guy was an investigative journalist. He know he knew enough to lie about things and get away with it. Like he's kind of a cunning guy. He can be, and he can be smart. Uh, and he's not like some dumb jock. He was, he grew up a nerd and then worked out hoping that, you know, you know, getting like trophies for sports would impress his dad. But that was the only reason he did it. Uh, and then he works out now to kind of, you know, as like a way of str like stress relief with the symbiote. So, um, 
yeah, he's not uh, he's not just some dumb jock. And so I like that in this, he's he offers something to the story, and he's the key to them, you know, the Marvel Universe fighting back against the poisons. So we'll find out more what happens with this in the next issue. I'm very excited. Every week from now until the first week of May, there's going to be an issue of this, five issues, and we get one every week. So I'm so excited. So every week I'll do these reviews for you guys, and I'll bring you the digital codes. And whoever gets the whoever the first person to put those codes in gets the comic. And if you didn't get it, don't worry because we'll have other digital codes to give away soon. So did you read Venomize? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I really appreciate you watching my show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.